Hey, I'm Aisha Jaffer, your evening host here on The Current, and I'm joined today by Grace Cummings. Hello. Thank you for joining me today. Thank I know you've you. been all over. You've come by way of Australia to UK, Europe, mm. and then now here in the States, and I know you're going to continue on your world tour. I want to know what it feels like to be touring now, but also with such a diverse array of artists like the Viagra Boys, and now yeah. Ezra Furman, and King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Yeah, I mean, it's been... We're, we're at the end of the, you know, the American part of the tour now, and um, I feel like I don't know what day it is, but it's been really fantastic, and I think a bit of a shock after, you know, two years of, you know, effectively being locked down in, in Melbourne, where I'm from, um, you know, kind of going from sitting on your ass doing nothing to moving all the time and driving all the time and being tired and playing shows and sweating and all that kind of stuff. But um, we have, I think, a kind of newfound appreciation for tiredness. <laughs> it, you know, uh, it's, it's a good thing. And um, we've had a really great time now touring with Ezra Furman, who I love so much, and Viagra Boys, who I love so much. Um, and I think, I don't know, I think there's kind of, you know, we, we change our show a little bit, um, depending on, you know, who we're playing with and what kind of audiences, you know, may or may not be there. But I think there's something that's just similar, you know, to, 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 to both of those people and, and, and to Giz as well. And, you know, I think nothing is really exclusive or exclusively for, you know, certain people or something like that. And I think that you can get something out of, you know, all of those things. I'm making no sense. No, it's universal. <laughs> it's I think universal. I, I get what you're saying there. Yeah. I think that's cool, though. You're consciously thinking about the different audiences, but also just like encompassing that everyone will react in their way. It's all kind of universal yeah. the way that they connect to music, mm. um, which is exciting, especially to see these different reactions around the world. But also, like like you said, get right back into moving and like yeah. getting that energy back, which is, uh, is there any like things that you've done to kind of like overcome that hurdle of like not not moving to moving, other than, of course, Coca-Cola, we know. <laughs> I've been drinking Coke because I'm in America. Um, what, what, like something that we do to kind of get energy or, or whatever? Yeah, do you have any sort of like band group rituals? We do, yes. I, I can see my tour manager. I can't see him. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. We, we, oh, man. <laughs> We started joking around about the band Wang Chung, <laughs> <laughs> and um, we we um, have a couple of songs that we, you know, kind of started singing, you know, to be silly in in the van going from place to place, and one of them just ended up being Wang Chung, which we thought was really funny, and now we've kind of made it a. Um, like a pre-show ritual to sing everybody Wang Chung tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, perfect. That's one of the things. <laughs> I kind of can't think of a better song to really amp you up. Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know how it happened, but um, yeah, that's one of them. Natural occurrence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so that kind of, in a way, kind of leads me to this question, but your origin story. Like, mm-hmm. I really love that you started as a drummer, doing these classic rock covers, ACDC, Jimi yeah. Hendrix. So what what is the evolution of the beginning of your origin story? Like, how did you start that way? And of course, you you're so far removed, but actually mm-hmm. not completely far removed from that sound. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. I, I kind of started that way because that's, <clears throat> you know, what me and my friends were doing at the time, really. Yeah. But I was always singing, um, you know, and I was deeply in love with Bon Scott and still am. Um, and I think, I don't know, I think like all of those, you know, ACDC and, and Hendrix and, um, you know, white stripes and stuff all have that kind of common theme, you know, um, even with Hendrix's like wailing guitar solos, there's like this kind of soul in it. That's all, all kind of the same. And, um, I don't know. I just was singing that and then I kept singing and singing other things and then started to sing my own songs. I don't know. I don't really know. Yeah. Do you still dabble in <clears throat> in your own time or in covers or anything like that with classic rock? Fuck yeah. <laughs> All the time. It's my favorite what's, thing. What's the ultimate? What's the number one? Number one to play on the drums? Jailbreak. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> of course. That's perfect. <laughs> Well, so, uh, you know, I have to bring this up because you did a our hometown hero from Minnesota, Bob Dylan cover that went viral and then led to signing uh, with Eric Moore. Uh, yeah, kind of. Kind of. I, I, I um, was playing a gig. Uh, my very good friend, Leah Senior, got Eric to come along and he saw me there and, um, you know, said to me, do you have an album? And I kind of didn't, but I said, yeah. I do, um, and I gave you know a collection of songs that I that I'd recorded recently and put them together and gave it to him and he put it out. Um, but yeah, the video I think um, he 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 got me to do that and I, I'm kind of laughing now because everyone's like you went on YouTube and you did this and I was like I bloody well didn't, <laughs> <laughs> but I did I, I did sing a cover of, of Bob Dylan yeah yeah so you don't feel like it's like like how everybody's saying like it's a viral moment or whatever that kind of leads or was nah, it a, yeah nah, okay nah. I did see the video and I love makes me laugh though I kind of like it but that's yeah it's not what happened unfortunately. <laughs> Well, you know what? I I went and looked it up and I loved it because I think I saw him post it and be like, yeah. I love this artist and I'm putting her on my record label. Yeah, I yeah. love that. I love that yeah. um, enthusiasm. That's what you want on your side, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. And now you're on ATO, of I course, am. and we have this new Elmstorm Queen. But before mm-hmm. we talk about that, I have to talk about some other sides of your life that I think are really interesting. Okay. Like I know you're an accomplished uh, stage actor. I do act on stage, yeah. <laughs> and I wonder if does that bleed into like how you create your songs and how you are on stage? Does that kind of intertwine with your musical craft? Um. I mean, I think the experience of being an actor and lots of things that I'm inspired by it and, and like and, and read and all of that kind of stuff would naturally go into what I write because it's, you know, a, a part of who I am. Um, but I think they both just have, you know, one common theme, which is I'm probably just quite a dramatic person. Um, and... It feels very different to me, I think, the the different kind of performances. Um, but there's always, like, maybe a tiny little bit of your real self that's not there, um, I think, if that makes any sense. Kind of retracted from, from both crafts a little bit? I like, think so. This is kind of like the presentation, but it's me, but there's a piece that's... I'm keeping to me kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a like a hyper 
self or something. I love that. <laughs> I, I do love that. And that makes sense in, in some of the things I'm going to ask you about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but before I get there, I want to talk about the creation process of some of the music. I know that, uh -huh. or I read somewhere that uh, my understanding is you don't really necessarily, you're not someone who would set time of, like and be like, this is when I'm writing my record or mm. whatever. It kind of comes in the moment. Yeah. Like, inspiration. So I'm wondering, what is the strangest moment in which a song has kind of come to you or an idea has come to you? Um, during a tornado I was in last night. <laughs> <laughs> the fresh new song. <laughs> yeah. Driving through Iowa in a tornado. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> which was just last night. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, no, but I, I, I'm not a huge fan of going, oh, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write a song and I'm going to, you know, belt it out that way. I I, I kind of, well, first of all, I, I'm far too impatient. Um, and second of all, I, I, I just don't want to, you know, kind of force that that type of thing because um, I, I think it'll just be crap. But that's the way that I kind of think about it. I was listening to some outtakes of um, Abbey Road and George was playing something to the other Beatles and he said, I can't think of what attracts me. It attracts me like a what? And they said, oh, just say anything. It attracts me like a pomegranate or something. He said, I can't think of what attracts me. I've been trying for six months. And I was like, if George Harrison can try for six months to get that, surely I can fucking take a little bit more time <laughs> writing my song. So I, um, I, I'm, I'm going to try and get get better at you know working on something for you know for the long term and and see how it it turns out and try not to be so impatient impatient like it's now or never kind of thing yeah then you're gonna have the pomegranate song <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's true sometimes that works though the nonsensical but i like the mm. idea of like having time because there is this old idea right like you got to make the record within six weeks or whatever mm. you gotta do it but i feel like people will get to own their craft more now and you even self-produced this record storm queen yeah which is amazing and a wonderful choice and and I wonder what like what led you to that some more ownership or some more, more feeling of creativity um well I mean I had I, I had a hell of a lot of help from two amazing um engineers Jesse Williams and Paul Mabry um but also it, it was it was that way out of you know pure necessity really because we were in lockdown for right. for so long and i couldn't get a band together to rehearse or to um you know even come over to my house and and figure you know anything out so you had to just be alone and, and think about it yourself you know like how is this going to sound what what do i want these parts to be like all that kind of thing and we had maybe one two weeks in the middle of two you know periods of lockdown to have two days recording I think so we just had to get there and be like all right I want you to not do this but be like this this is the way is I want yes. this to be you know this is the way I want that to be um so yeah it's not like I just put on a producer hat it was kind of like how do I figure this out we're, and that's what I would say. The impatience is advantageous. You got it done. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to talk about the title track, Storm Queen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you you reference uh, Towns Van Zant, and you know, Storm Queen is is the premise of this. So I'm I'm curious of how in this story, uh, Towns Van Zant is part of the story, but also like who inspired, who is, or uh, the muse of the idea of Storm Queen. Um. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean, Towns Van Zandt, I can ask, answer that kind of easily. Um, you know, I think it was a period of time in my life where you were held um, by, um, by these kinds of poets or heroes or music or whatever, you know, um, to 
you know, because m- maybe nobody else was, you know. So I think listening to a, a town song or a Dylan song or something like that is, you know, it's like being being held or having your hand held by by something or someone. Um, and uh, Storm Queen, I think it's kind of something or like a, a made up kind of God or something like that. Um, you know, that, you know, as a reaction to like the poetic majesty of, of like nature, I, I suppose, you know, I don't, even though I reference kind of like religious things throughout the album, I'm not a religious person, but I think it's, you know, just the biggest word that I've got, you know, is God or something like that. And if I did believe in, in, in anything, I think there'd be lots of gods and perhaps Storm Queen would be one of them. And, um, whilst being loving and forgiving, perhaps they're, um, you know, punishing and, um, you know, avenging, you know, Mother Earth or something like that. I don't know, Storm Queen. But it's also just, I don't know, something, something I got that was, that was big, that kind of described a bigness that I, that I wanted. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. And you feel that in the record, <laughs> you feel that bigness. I mean, you survived a storm yesterday too. So you, you felt this as well, but I feel my dad bigness. messaged me and said, maybe you are the storm queen. And I was like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, and you talk about religious, uh, parts of it, not blaming it, but like their references, right. Their references of like this beautiful, majestic, mm. you know, yeah. world. And I, I'm curious about heaven because for me, I love the music video that goes along with the song. I think they're intertwangled. If that's a word intertwined, <laughs> I'll take it <laughs> intertwined it's a new word. really well. Uh, there's like an intensity within it, but also I feel like there's a lightness within it too. It's a little playful in, yeah. from my perspective, mm-hmm. but I'm curious what's like, what was the inspiration of the idea of the song, but the visual also that went with it? Um, I did that video with my good friend Gil Gilmore, who has done all the artwork for me, um, and and videos, um, and we kind of he's a bit crazy, which is great. You know, he's got his studio in the back of, of our house. We live together, and um, we were messaging each other, you know, texting each other about ideas that we had. And then suddenly he prints them all out and sticks them on his walls and kind of gets surrounded by all these things. And we had, um, you know, all these things, oh, we'll do that, we'll do this, we'll do that, blah, blah, blah. And then it kind of came down to it and we were like, let's not do any of it. You know, what? what is stronger than singing to somebody and seeing them and them see you? not much, you know, I think, um, it was kind of like the ultimate less is more in, in my opinion. Yeah. And that came across too. (laughs) I really loved it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, it's, it's definitely caught me now two little birds. That's a gorgeous song. Thank you. And I, you know, it has such a visual along with all of your songs, truly where I'm thinking like, Oh, you know, I'm laying by my bed looking out the window and I see two Tui birds like playing along in the song. Mm. And I'm just curious, this is going to be somewhat of a silly question, but what, what birds do you visualize? What is also your favorite bird? Because I know Australia birds are like, that's a really hard thing. That's really hard. 2021 bird of the year in Australia. Fairy, was it fairy wren? It was a fairy wren. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. I voted for the yellow crested cockatoo. Uh. (laughs) Shade. (laughs) But just curious, because oh. I know birds are important uh, within Australasia. And I mean, we don't have bird of the year here. We should. Uh, but I know sometimes it overshadows some of the luxury. Yeah, yeah. Even. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone gets right <laughs> into it. I love it. Um, well, I don't know. I uh, My manager recently said to me, Grace, you've got to stop writing about birds. <laughs> <laughs> I said, nah. I have a thing about birds, a fascination with them and, and kind of what they represent and just the beauty of them in general. Um, on the the cover of the album is a crimson rosella, um, which is a beautiful bird um, that 
I see a lot in East Gippsland in Victoria. Um, my favourite bird, I have to like put them into three categories. Do it. <laughs> the best bird sound, my favourite bird sound is that of the magpie. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, they've all got the best sounds. All right, I'm going to put three. Magpie, <laughs> black cockatoo. Yes. Kookaburra. Oh, those are all great yeah. choices. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I've got that. That's not even true. Uh, too many. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this one, that one. We're going to get the book of birds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to ask the question. I think the album is beautiful. I think it tells it. Uh, it's very strong. Like you kind of have describe Storm Queen as the persona, and I feel like that's translated through the sound. Um, so before I let you go, I just want to ask, do you have anything else you want our listeners to know about your music? I'm not sure. Uh, or just in I'm general. not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if there's anything that I want anybody to know. Um, in fact, sometimes I kind of actively um, move away from that because I feel as though if I put my meaning onto something, it means that someone else can't um, get their own, which I think is kind of the most important thing. Um, and my most, you know, my, my hope um, as well for maybe at least somebody to, to relate to something um, and feel as though perhaps it was written just for them, you know. Um, so I won't say a bloody thing. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you for joining us. Thanks Grace so much for having here. me. Um, and Storm Queen is out now.